What's up guys and gals? Um, we are joining a scratch build that I started already in progress. Came down here last night, you know, the wife and I are kind of arguing and I just kind of said screw it and just started building something just to take out my frustrations. <laughs> so I didn't bother filming the first part of this um, just because I wanted to, it was more of a more of a zen thing than than anything else um, but you can see what I've got going here this is basically going to be a 6SL7 preamp tube uh, into a 6v6 single-ended output um, 5y3 rectifier back over here I dug up these transformers that I already had in my transformer stash these aren't going to be used this is just this was already on the chassis um, this chassis it was a used chassis and it just had some extra holes in it, so I'm just using what's what's here. Uh, this is something I got in a in one of those big deals, those big trades um, that I uh, posted about before, but I didn't get to film uh, this chassis for some reason. At least I don't think I did. Uh, but what we're basically building here is a. Let's see. Let's look at the schematic. We are building a uh, about a 19, an early 1950s Valco Spectator. Um, the Valco or Supro Spectator, um, as it was sometimes labeled, um, is a pretty simple amp. It's kind of uh, Fender Champish, um, but uh, I'm going instead of just you know digging up an old Champ schematic, I'm going with this because I've got one of these actually right now. And uh, I was just screwing around with it and servicing it. And you will see the service video for that as well, I'm sure. Uh, if, if it's not already up, it'll probably be up soon. Uh, I'm just waiting on a handle for it, and it should be completed. Um, but, uh, and actually, you know, I'll, I'll post a link up here too, uh, up in this part of the video, if you want to click on that. And it will should open in another window. You can watch that one after this video. But um, sounded great. You know, and I've had some spectators in the past as well, and they're killer sounding little amps, man. So and I just kind of got inspired. I said, what the hell, man? They, these look pretty simple. Um, and I've got all this stuff, Lord knows. And I've got enough stuff to scratch build an amp. So, you know, wife yells at you, what are you going to do? But uh, lock yourself away for a little while and scratch build something. Um, one of the things that I was kind of proud of is I had most of these parts already on hand or I had all these parts already on hand so I don't have to buy anything um, and a lot of this stuff is um, either came to me really cheaply um, or was used uh, for instance <clears throat> uh, this this is a very odd input jack check out this input jack this is something I mean this was new old stock and I found it in one of the drawers from one of those trades I did recently and look at this thing this is weird it's just like a plate and then you've got it's actually a grounded jack um, and when you plug in it pushes this down and ungrounds it what a weird design and then you have two terminals down here underneath so that's really weird and then this plate serves as a ground terminal so a very cool jack. I just had to use that. I found a couple of those um, in my stash and just said, what the hell? Well, I'm going to use that for the hell of it. Um, I'm going to use a switch um, on the uh, on the volume pot. We've got a 500K, and this volume pot is a 1 meg. And there's a couple of things that aren't going to be exactly like this schematic. For instance, you know, this volume pot is 1 meg. I might as well go ahead and mark that. Let's see. So this, yeah, I was changing to one meg. Um, and also there was one other thing down here I forgot to mark last night when I came down down and started doing this. This one is a 5,500 ohm rather than a 6,800. The exam, the uh, spectator example that I had sounded really great. And um, the resistor that was in it was supposed to be a 6,800, but it was reading like 40, I don't know, 42 or 47, something like that. And it was just sounding really kick-ass um, with that. I, I did go ahead and put that one back to stock. But on this one, I thought, what the hey, I might as well go ahead and go for a slightly lower lower value uh, right here and, and just kind of uh, mimic um, 
what I was hearing on that other example. Change this 100K to a 47K, and we're going to omit two of these input jacks, so we just don't need them. Um, adding a 25 microfarad bypass cap here also on this second one. And I think instead of a 39, I think all I had on hand was like a 3300 uh, ohm for that. Yeah, I think it was 3.3 3 or 3.2K. That's what I put here instead of the 39. So, you know, I got close on most of these values. Like the, these here as a 220 instead of a 270. I just didn't have 270s on hand. So I'm going with the 220s. This one, I'm upping the value to a 470K. Um, here, I'm going with a 300. So just some little things like that, little tweaks. Um, but overall, it's going to be basically, um, you know, a Supro Spectator. But we will see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead probably here and um, uh, finish this out tonight. Um, get a... We also have a box to put it in. I'll show you that as well. Some of you may recognize this little record player box from a previous conversion video where I uh, took the record player amplifier out and made a, a little cigar box amp out of it. Uh, well, here's the uh, box that was left over, and uh, as you can see, I've got $10 in it. And uh, certainly got our $10 worth out of the amplifier, but uh, let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of the out of this by using the box also the box as you'll recall probably <clears throat> was mostly wood um, the back and top are more or less like a glorified cardboard um, but just for the heck of it to have something to put this amp in for, uh, for the moment it looks like it's gonna fit fairly nicely so we're gonna try to use this as our little amplifier box we also have a uh, a C69R Jensen speaker from 1962. Uh, this came out of uh, some kind of Hammond cabinet or Leslie cabinet, I believe. And uh, great speaker. Sounds, sounds really good. And uh, we are going to use this. Uh, install it in the box and uh, also our amplifier and see, uh, see what, how this works out. Okay, I realize we're skipping way ahead here, but let's take a look at what became of this little Mitchell uh, 1950s record player. Um, as you can see here, we uh, opted for a little bit of pizzazz in our speaker grill configuration. Um, it was a 6x9 speaker that I had available, um, so instead of just doing an oval or instead of doing uh, you know just a circle, I uh, opted to do a three circle scheme, so I cut three circles, and these little half moons I cut separately and then just flipped the half moon around and glued and reinforced it back in from behind so they can't move, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. This this um, little Mitchell record player was kind of neat. It had this leatherette covering on the top, and the rest of it's covered in kind of a, kind of a tree bark looking stuff. Um, but here's our chassis. It, it, this was an aluminum chassis. Uh, I may have discussed this earlier in the video. It's been a little while since I've filmed, filmed the first part of this. <clears throat> but this was an aluminum chassis that I got uh, in one of those large deals. Uh, so that worked out perfectly where the, uh, the old speaker used to sit in the record player. Um, just to remind us of what this thing used to be, I went ahead and... Uh, preserved our 78, 45, and 33 and a third indicator where the switch was on the record player. That was actually inside this unit. Uh, we have a volume and the tone, of course, our little light. Uh, this is uh, this light comes on whenever your fuse is, is uh, blown, so that tells you if you got a blown fuse, which was kind of cool. There's a little bit of a grating in here. It's going to be hard, kind of hard to see in this light, but uh, you see that grating right there. That's actually... Um, uh, that is uh, like the weather guard stuff that you put in your uh, your gutters, or gutter guard, rather. Uh, but you can get that gutter guard material at Lowe's or Home Depot pretty cheap and then cut it to size and use it for a lot of different things if you're building amps. Um, but the cool thing about this is that it opens, uh, like a few of my other designs, if you follow my channel. Um, and this is, you know, one of those cool accidents that happens when you use something like this. You kind of get this this sort of neat thing happens every now and then. Happy accidents. 
Uh, but there is our chassis, which fits in there nicely. Uh, most of this is wood. Uh, the only part that isn't wood is the bottom, which is made out of um, it's kind of a glorified cardboard. Uh, but it does the job for the bottom. Uh, the baffle up here actually is, is real wood, so that's nice. The speaker I end up using is a C69R, and that is a 1962, and I think this came out of some kind of uh, Hammond tone cab, perhaps. So, so there's that. The only downfall um, is that since this is such a tight enclosed cabinet, uh, you do sometimes get a little bit of microphonics if, if you um, have the wrong 6SL7. I had to go through a couple of 6SL7s in my stash to find one that's uh, low microphonics. But uh, there she is. She's got um, little feet on the bottom. These are the original brass feet for the record player. So when you're transporting it, uh, that's how you would have sat it down. And the handle, of course, is on the other side. That's still the original Lucite handle. I mean, you could play it like this as well and then open it up and have like an open back sort of tone as well, uh, which we will test that out momentarily. But yeah, let's give this thing a listen and see what it sounds like. Oh, sweetie. You're upset. I'm sorry. Here, let's do this then. Let's go for the nuclear option. All right, you ready? Oh, sweetheart, I know. I know. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Okay, for the first part of this demo, I'm going to use my 1967 uh, Hofner Super Beetle guitar. Uh, I actually used this same guitar, I think, on the uh, demonstration for the original Supro amp that I cloned, that Supro Comet. And I will put a uh, link to that video down here or somewhere up in these corners. Um, if you have your notes turned on um, in Google, you should be able to see those. Um, but I'll, I'll post a link for that. But yeah, let's give this thing a listen and see what it sounds like.
1950s Mitchell record player uh, converted into a 1952 Supro Valco Comet model 1610. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, please subscribe to see my other videos in the future down here below. And y'all take care.